Kenny here with Gardening Simplified. It's April 19th and I think it's time to do a full garden tour. There's so many changes going on in the garden since uh, the past few weeks and it's about time to show some of them. Of course everything's seeming to get big. A lot of stuff had not been caught up with yet. Our onions here in the Victory Garden are uh, doing good but we still need to do some more planting. Uh, let's just start over here on this new addition. This was uh, where we cleaned up here a few months back and decided to plant. Now our, our uh, shallots that's planted here are really uh, doing good. Uh, these were planted from seed for those that didn't know. Now I still have a problem with my uh, ginger. It's still pale. I'm sure it needs uh, some fisher motion and hopefully I'll get to it. Uh, my rhubarb is starting to take hold on some of it. We've got a few leaves on uh, some that need to be taken off, but it's starting to get rooted in, which is good. And my uh, French fingerling potatoes are uh, starting to come back. Now we need to, we're going to pile a little compost up on some of these, and we've got to get in there. And we uh, are containers that we moved our herbs over here which they're doing uh, really good we separated out the the uh, oregano which it's starting to fill in the thing and the sage we split it up too uh, this is the second year it wintered good and it has some beautiful uh, flowers there which are great and they will probably reseed some some seeds back in there and then our other ones are doing good too uh but anyway, uh, like I say, these French fingerlings, they'll, they're doing okay. They're not the best, but they're doing okay. And our rhubarb definitely is uh, starting to take hold, and our smaller ones are starting to leaf out good. We've got, uh, we've got some of our onions, uh, and we know this winter thing is... But the ones that were planted early that's went through the winter, they're bulbing up nicely. These uh, newer ones that aren't bulbing much are the ones that were uh, planted in to fill in. In fact, I think maybe twice we did that. But we've got some nice uh, size onions, uh, three and a half, four inch, and, and uh, some medium size, which, which would be good. But they're not quite ready to harvest. And for those of you that... Uh, have onions now it's starting to get a little soft on the neck right here and that's usually when it's getting close uh, to harvest time because the the neck will start to fall over and uh, then we'll we'll pull them up and start doing something with them now these onions here won't be quite as good for storage as a lot of onions because uh, when they start getting big fat necks like this they they tend to want to uh, go bad quicker, so uh, most of these will probably be uh, freeze dried. Now our Cherokee purple tomatoes up here, I believe I'm not sure about these. I'm and I'm thinking these aren't Cherokee purple. They're let's see, we know how to tell. Yes, these are Cherokee purple. Uh, but they're doing good. They're starting to bloom. They're, they're starting to get a little bit of size on them. Our other uh, peppers and stuff, we've got them out. Uh, they're starting to take hold and get start to grow. Uh, we've had excellent recovery on our uh, collards here and our late flat dutch down there. These you can see in here the onions that were uh, that survived the winter and will be coming in here. It won't be long. We'll be har harvesting these out and then let the other ones come on. But our late flat Dutch are starting to form little heads. Uh, they've got one there. It's got a couple of leaves and needs to uh, come off. Now we have been having a lot of aphids in some of our uh, uh, cabbage. And we'll have to deal with that. Now, our little old 
uh, golden beets here. They still haven't got any size to them. They're just not doing that good. Now we're fixing to harvest out a few few of these uh, red ones. Now these these here are the the wonder beets, and and it's got good size beet there, but. We're going to do a little canning up on some of these. We've carried a few to the market, but we've got to get some uh, preserved so we'll have them. And if you have a good uh, pickled beet recipe, well, you might want to share it in the comments. Uh, our leek is still uh, doing pretty good. Now, we had some, some of it was, uh, one or two was going to seed, but most of it was hanging in there. We've been... Picking a lot of these peas, you can see now these are Alaskan bush, and they're, and I don't know why they call them bush, because you can see they're up about four foot or so tall, but uh, nice fat full pea. So more in the uh, victory garden. Now our, our squash, we had replanted this, and this is happening the same way as it has in the past. Uh, instead of setting a bunch of male flowers like squash normally would, it's setting squash and then it'll set the male flowers later. Our beans are doing good and our uh, cucumbers are starting to come along. They're starting to put a few flowers on. And these peas here have been blooming good. They're, they're setting a few. It's not uh, quite time to pick <laughs> they got a little ways to go but we'll see how good these uh do in here and they're just going wild and this is our uh second row which we put this in later and they're just now uh starting to form their their pods so uh it, and there's a few on the other side of the row that actually were uh uh I picked a few, but there's they're just now starting. And we have some more, uh, and I'm going to say these are Cherokee purple too. Uh, tomatoes here, and they're they're doing really well. Our cucumbers, as you know, we had to replant everything. We replanted the ends because they were definitely gone, and uh, started some more. And the ones in the middle weren't recovering; uh, they were just kind of sitting there stunted from the cold weather so uh, we planted a, a new batch of them and, and these ones that we planted in first uh, <clears throat> they're starting to come on they've got their uh, little female flowers and male flowers coming on so it won't be long we ought to start having some cucumbers and these are done real good and if you go back and you you uh Look in my garden tips. Uh, we talked about when we planted this these uh, squash about my miracle powder, or and it's not really miracle powder, uh, but it was uh, some bone meal. Putting a quarter cup of bone meal under here because the extra uh, phosphorus really makes the plant healthy, and uh, you can see these plants are really healthy i was i want to see if maybe i can find a tag on the end here uh, one way or the other and i could give you a date when when these plants are there, there it is now if we can just get down here to it this was uh three one so uh, these are about a month and a half old from the time they were actually, I start them to sell trace uh, about less than a week and then we put them in the ground. We just got them germinated good uh, and then put them into the ground and we use that little mixture. And, and now we had to cut off a whole lot of uh, the fruit on here because it was, it started coming on. And it wasn't getting pollinated because there wasn't any male flowers. Once the male flowers started, uh, now we'll have some good fruit and we'll start harvesting this out of here.
but as you can see the little bit of difference these these plants here uh they're big and full they're just like a uh, normally what a the zucchini at the end and you just can't hardly tell the difference so uh you might want to try that trick now i will need to get out here with some uh some of my baking soda mix for for a fungus side it looks like it might be getting a little bit of uh blight or mildew on there in here we've got our uh we've got a few transplants and the these here were extra cucumbers they probably won't never go out and they're they uh definitely they're in need of nitrogen now i do have some collard backups and some bunching onions we finally got the other onions out we just have a few uh leak over there uh, we took our we, then we've got some extra okra over here and some roselle. We took our sweet potatoes out, all our slips, and planted them. And, of course, you've seen the, the video, but if you did, it was just recently posted. But uh, we've watered these back in, and we'll grow some more slips. If we need them, we'll have them. If we don't, we'll have them, too. Uh, around this way, our garlic, it is still... I'd say kind of pitiful. It's it could be some that this row should have been uh, had some new compost on it. It has been fertilized, but they they just aren't growing that well. It's I'm fixing to dig up uh, one or two and see how the uh, bulbs looking on. We've got our white onions over here. Uh, we've got some of them bulbing up good, so we'll probably harvest some of them. Now, I do have a problem. I'm going to guess it's flea beetles or something that's been getting my eggplant. I need to come over here and uh, spray these with some spinosad, uh, maybe some soap. Go back up here. Our rosemary's doing good, and our chives are really doing good. And we keep growing garlic here. This dirt was originally from, we moved these beds and the head garlic in them and the nodules come up and then the elephant garlic. And we get a, some every year uh, growing back. We've been harvesting our uh, asparagus and it's been uh, really good. Some of it we miss and of course it's growing up, but uh, we'll harvest the rest of this month and then we'll just let it go on. Our bunching onions over here is doing good. Uh, this this is our mixed crop of cilantro and it's uh, looking good fixing to harvest this and we've got plenty of, of deal coming on so we'll be harvesting a lot of it and our uh, curly leaf parsley we had a little more cilantro here this was the same batch that was over there but they were still in uh cell trays and actually someone was getting pretty big because they grew into the ground so we put them out in this little spot our <clears throat> echinacea is coming back good and of course we've got some weeds hiding off in here too this and it's easy enough to get rid of them when they come up like that but it's this is all either coming back from what was here or it's uh reseeding itself and and we have a look like a weed that wants to get in there a few of these we'll have to come back in here and get the, these weeds out later or uh chamomile is doing great uh i need to harvest some of these fire heads off of here this is all just reseeded itself and of course our sunflowers here are, are doing good we do have some uh we have a little batch of sunflowers uh, right here this is the the uh, Peruvian or something I'm not sure uh, but I think but it's the one that we use for our trap crop to get get the leaf fit foot bug we still we have some extra peppers but we still got to get our habaneros out and somehow I forgot to plant Carolina Reapers and didn't have any seeds so uh, I've got still got to get them. We've got some spare tomatoes that don't look good at all. And uh, we've got some more 
uh, cucumbers over here this, that are, uh, I just, I planted them for backups and we'll see how that goes as far as if I get, can get a space where we pull something out, I'm going to put, put in some more cucumbers. And we've got a few uh, Napa uh, style uh, cabbage that needs to go out. And let's see in here, the greenhouse is mostly planted. Uh, our cucumbers are doing good, starting to uh, bloom. There's two different types down here. Let's zoom back out so we don't make you seasick. Now we had a stray squash that was there, so we planted it. Uh, these here on the edge, these are uh, Kajari melons. Uh, I planted them at the edge. What, what the intent is, is to grow them in this open area over here where we moved our containers from because we kind of don't want to really mess with it and put another bed in short. Uh, it'd be a narrow bed and narrow walkway, so we figured we'd leave it like it was. But I have them. Uh, in here, we've got some, uh, this is some pack choy. This was not looking too healthy in its trays. We, we'll see if it'll come up or if it's just going to bolt. Then we have uh, some bok choy here. And then as we come down, we got our next batch of, of cilantro. we we'll just keep growing it because... As it warms up or the temperatures fluctuate a lot, cilantro is just going to bolt into uh, uh, coliander. And so we'll give them it. Now this is uh, right here is holy basil. And then we have our new batch of, of parsley and it's starting to take hold. Parsley is kind of slow to start off. Now we have fig trees all over. This got tags and we got citrus trees all over. Uh, We've got a nice uh, bunch of, of uh, cherry tomatoes here, and they're not ripe, but they're, they're uh, getting a little bit bigger, so it won't be long I'll get to bite on a tomato. We came in here and decided I was going to go ahead and plant, I had some red cabbage, and I was going to go ahead and plant it and grow it in the greenhouse and see how it does. Uh, hopefully, uh, with the shade cloth, it'll make it to where it lasts longer. Now, these cherry tomatoes, we've been uh, keeping them to two liters uh, so they don't get out. Once they get up about five foot, I'll just let them sprawl and go wild. These won't stay in here all year. Now, also, we've added a sprinkler system, overhead sprinkler system in here. Uh, this... We'll probably move this up just a little bit higher, but <clears throat> uh, and it's going to knock back. But you, a lot of people worry about watering uh, the tops of their or watering overhead with tomatoes and stuff. And you can get a lot of splash from the bottom, but as far as most of your stuff, you can kind of control it. And if it does get to where it gets diseased, which we'll just pull it out. We've got some jalapeno peppers growing here. We've harvested a few. Uh, out of there, there's a few more hiding, hiding off in there, not quite ready. We've got some basil here. Looks like the, the bugs are wanting to come in here and, and work on it. And so if we're going to have uh, bugs eating it, we're going to uh, we'll take and... Maybe we'll make a bunch of pesto and just put it in the freezer. We have a, a over here. We've got uh, some early Jersey. Uh, well, let's see. This is some Lawsonata kale right here, and then the end we've got early Jersey uh, cabbage. This is our next uh, bunch of lettuce. We don't have a lot for the market. This is probably going to bolt off, but we figured we'd just do some for salad. And then we have a little bit older bok choy, and we're hoping to, uh, you know, get this to where we need it. But uh, it's definitely I'm going to have to come in here with some spinosad or something because we have a lot of uh, bugs coming in here. Uh, looks like maybe leaf miners or something there. Don't know, but uh, 
definitely we'll have to uh, dose them with something, neem oil or, or soap or something. But anyway, we've got a our uh, pomegranate tree is looking real good. This one was propagated this last fall. These are early tomatoes. These these here are the uh, celebrities. They're uh, doing good. They're setting tomatoes. It'll be a little bit, but not that long. You can see they get, uh, of course, we've got a cherry mixed in here too, but I think it's right. I don't know. That might be the cherry there, but these... The celebrities are setting their tomatoes too. Our carrots are not looking very pretty. Uh, they're still growing. We'll probably start. Uh, we've we've canned a few. We're hoping to freeze dry some. Uh, we'll see how that goes. We freeze dried last year, but the carrots that we freeze dried last year weren't that good of quality. So they're more of just maybe for soup or something. It's not. Uh, you know they just they just weren't very sweet uh we've got our bell peppers here we've we've harvested a a few off of here and we you can see they're they're uh doing good as far as producing and and this was kind of my idea was to get a few early plants in here so we could uh, have some we've also got some uh, these are uh, crimson giant radishes. We've got a lizard running around in there too. Now these crimson giants, they put on a, a bigger radish. Uh, it's good and flavorful too, but uh, they grow so much tops and in this greenhouse, I think they're stretching for light. And of course we have a bunch of other uh, citrus and stuff that we need to get out so we can plant uh, the rest of this row. Let's go and take a look up here. Up here we we have some uh, red lettuces. And then, of course, we've got a few uh, rutabagas. That's, uh, they're not real big. We maybe harvest a few. They're, they're not doing all that great, but... This lettuce looks like, kind of like they're almost the same, but they're definitely different. And one thing about lettuce, now these won't be long, they'll be bolting up. They, they haven't been picked uh, the past week because, in fact, the week before that too, because we were, uh, we were short for time that week before. And last week we went to get our, our bee for our hives and, and that... Uh, Kept us from picking any then. Now our we have some chard coming back, and it's doing okay. It's not fantastic. We've still got our uh, spinach holding up in here. Now they, these here, uh, these nettles are really rough. <laughs> you let them get too far down, and they've got some good but they tend to keep coming up and I grab them when I can. We have a few radishes here, but these are just some that the freeze didn't kill. Uh, this batch of onions here, uh, these are looking good. Uh, we've got some that are really, really good. This is probably about five inches, maybe a little more. Uh, and the, these are in here, I wouldn't say tight because they're roughly six inches apart. As long as they get plenty of fertilizer and water, and these are doing pretty good. Uh, there, there are some that survived the freeze and some that didn't. Uh, over here, this was our nodule uh, bed where we planted our garlic nodules for a test. And that's got quite a few, but... Uh, remember I said I was going to come back and put some onions in here, and we got this done yesterday. So uh, we figured we'd grow some green onions. I'm sure we're not going to grow these out to uh, bulbing, but if they if we do, we do. We have a few uh, sweet cherry peppers here. These 
two middle ones aren't doing too good. Part of it could be now it's trying to set uh, fruit on that one, and we'll get rid of that. We don't want. It. And we've got uh, over here. We've got uh, different hot peppers. Uh, we got our lemon drops, different things. We've got them put in. And this, uh, and I've been looking for worms on this cabbage. It's got to have some somewhere, but they they definitely uh, are hiding out. I'm, I'm going to have to come in here with my spinosad too, and and uh, take care of these. These some of these I have aphids on the bottom, and I have a few I'm going to cut out today uh, for the chickens. They always like, even though they're they're moved every day and they've got plenty of grass and stuff weeds. They really like when we bring them garden treats, so we'll bring some of that in. Uh, but but uh, they're forming good heads, uh, so it won't be long. We should have some some cabbage. And, of course, our other leek over here is doing pretty good. We've harvested just a little bit out of it. Our onions over here, the white ones that survived the freeze it's easy to tell that's the ones that's bulbed up and our red onions uh you can see how uh, well they bulbed up this this is usually this is a pretty pretty decent uh bunch we'd pulled some out that were trying to go to seed before we've still got some down here like uh this one that's uh, was one of them that kind of died back from the top and that and it shot a couple up from the bottom but it's been doing pretty good uh the fennel it's because of cold weather it's laying close to the ground it might start uh growing up better but it's it's really hugging the ground now we've got some cabbages here they're not the prettiest uh but we have left them in our red cabbage which it's always slow uh to grow and uh but it it seemed to hold up pretty good from the free. We've got broccoli, and I keep looking for for heads. This is green magic in in this row here, and uh, over here we've got uh, Waltham, I think, and uh, that's green sprouting broccoli over there. But it's growing good. It's I'm trying to keep a lot of water. And we can see right, it's just right now starting to form heads. So, so it won't be long. Yeah, there's there's another one down in there, just just forming. So, it won't be long. This will be uh, ready to to eat and take some to the market. Now over here with our Mitchahili cabbage, you know, I said I was letting this stuff go to seed. And, of course, and I have to fight the aphids, too, do a little spraying with some uh, soap and water. But you can see these seed pods, and you can see little bumps in them. These are the seeds. The, each plant has quite a few seeds. We've been cutting a few out, but we've been uh, trying to save quite a few seeds from these. We'll let them finish up before we uh, redo this row. And we have a few more down there, but a lot of them has been going to the chickens. Now we have our bell peppers. These are the same as inside. It's a large bell pepper. We didn't plant the uh, California Wonder this year. Well, I say those weren't. Those were banana peppers. These are the bell peppers, like inside that are, are producing. Uh, I planted a half a dozen to early, and then I started these at my regular time. And tomatoes are doing pretty good. We've got a little floor to weave on them. Uh, we're going to have to weave up some more. We've got up here, these are celebrities, and, and uh, these over here are the, the Rutgers. Uh, they're both uh, determinant varieties, so we'll get some pretty quick. Uh, here's some more uh, cabbage. This is... Getting to a head quicker, so it won't be long. We'll be eating this. I'm not sure which variety it is. Uh, 
I'm thinking it might be champion, but I'm not sure. Now I do have some some French fingerling are not or French breakfast radishes, and now these radishes are big, but but uh, most of them is not dowdy, and they're they're uh, they're a little hot because they've been there a while longer, but they're doing good. And uh, we've got uh, some. I'm trying to think if this is maybe Cherokee purples in here, and then we we have a few. Uh, uh, boy, my mind don't work. Uh, Kellogg's breakfast, and we've got some. German Johnson's in here, and a uh, bunch of different cherry tomatoes. I'm trying to think if it's sun. I, it's not the same cherry. We've got an orange cherry, and then we've got a red cherry, like growing inside. Uh, we've got all our hot peppers down here. Uh, they're doing pretty good. We've still got a few areas uh, left to... Uh, plant these two areas here. One of these, we've got our uh, over there by the greenhouse, we've got our pineapples that should have went in the ground last year, and we're going to put them in here because this has got a little lower pH, and that's what they like. Now up here, this tree is this is the one I planted from seed, and I just wanted you to see this. I've got my little apples coming on it this first year that's going to have them. I had to uh, hand pollinate those because uh, I got me a little brush and got pollen from another apple tree that was blooming and kind of went around and tried to pollinate them all. Now this one was planted the same time, but it doesn't appear that it's going to to flower this year. Now they weren't pruned and you can see they're kind of nasty shape. Of course I'll I'll do some summer prune pruning uh, maybe June, July. But uh, and get it down but I'm I'm gonna uh, espalier or whatever you call it. I'm gonna try to make it run more sideways so it stays in the row and I'm gonna keep it low. Uh, I might I might put a wire up and run it down it, but I doubt it because then it'll be in my way. The blueberries are doing good. And the strawberries, the production is not very good at all. And a lot of it is, you can see all these runners running out in here. Uh, Vicky's been out here today. You can see there's there's not any on this first part of the row and and there's none over on this other. Uh, row just just a few because we potted some up because we're going to finish out this row but uh, she's been in here cutting them out she already got a bushel basket of them and and that's the only the only way you're going to keep these to producing good is to cut off the runners but we needed a few and i'm going to experiment on uh, keeping a few of the other ones uh, to to see how far they how well they root out but that's about it in this garden. Let's go look at the other one. And at the old garden spot, we have our uh, sweet potatoes. You can see they're uh, not real happy. The uh, We did water them yesterday. The ground is moist, but they're, they've got to get those roots in there. It takes them a couple of weeks or so. Our uh, carrots are doing good. They do have a little bit of weeds and grass. I will need to go down the middle of the row with the wheel hoe. Uh, potatoes are doing excellent. We've been uh, going through every couple days. We were picking the flowers off the top, but we said, well, we're not going to worry about it. Uh, but they're, they're really doing good. Now, for those of you that... Uh, watch the potato plant video, and if you haven't planted your potatoes, if you're up further north, and uh, these potatoes were uh, 
just cut and put directly into the ground. Um, now, if you have a, a wet place or heavy clay, you might do it different, but that's the way production uh, growers do it. Now, we do have a few bare spots in here, and that was because we had uh, the freeze coming, and uh, we had to bury everything. And, and then the ones that were more vigorous come back up real quick, and we buried it again. Now, we still could have some come up, uh, from underneath there and fill these little spots, but there aren't that many gaps as you can see uh, You can tell different varieties grow different uh, we have the uh, Kennebex over here uh, those first two rows and They're more bushier these here are are the red Pontiacs and and uh, They're just a little bit different and those two rows and then these last uh, three rows here are uh, Yukon gold and they're a little spin spindlier and we don't have anything here yet hopefully we'll get enough moisture this is our uh, German Johnson potatoes they they don't they didn't ship them until uh, like the first part of uh, of April and normally we plant our potatoes in the middle of February and so uh, Whenever they came in I had to leave them a little bit make sure they green sprouted better And then I put them in and these I planted whole potatoes. They were perfect uh, size small potatoes So we'll see how well that does but they're gonna be running behind on the other ones Another thing another thing we did uh, up here was we moved our sprinkler system over. It was right here. We moved it there because we want to make sure it got uh, the sweet potatoes good. And then we added this other one. We still don't have the water line hooked to it, but that won't take just a little bit. But we can go down here. You see a lot of green. And what this is is uh, small grass coming up in the middle of uh, our okra which our okra is still still small i'm gonna have to come in here and i'm gonna have to get take care of some of these weeds it's really early for okra it's just gonna kind of set here and it's putting in roots in the bottom once it starts getting a little hotter it'll really jump up and take off so uh hopefully it won't be too long and last but not least uh we're down here at the uh, lower garden. I don't know if you can see down there a ways. It's a little water in the road. We did water it overnight. Uh, as a lot of you know, we lost a lot of our beans and, and uh, purple holes that was here due to the uh, 25 degree freeze that come through. So we replanted uh, these rows over here and up to here. Now, these rows in here were actually, uh, the purple holes did survive, but they were just bare, barely uh, sitting there. They weren't growing. Uh, so as you can see, we've got uh, a lot of uh, little purple holes just germinating, but we put a little extra water on them last night. It's supposed to rain today, but I don't ever uh, count on that. But uh, these these rows here, and then uh, when we replanted those over there, we plant, replanted these two rows just a little bit behind them. But as you can see, it's a lot of green. The grass that's coming up, there's just a few pieces of ryegrass, but most of it is, is nut grass. And we hope that they'll overcome it enough to where they'll uh, produce good, and I, I think they'll be fine. But uh, the nut grass is just something that's going to be here. Uh, unless something decides to to take it out. Now let's go up there and we'll look and see how the corn and melons are doing. Now we have uh, cantaloupes here and they all look kind of pale. Uh, they should be uh, kind of getting a little bit better. I'm hoping that they'll, they'll take off. A few of the watermelons seem to do a little bit better and then we have pumpkins out there on the end. Uh, but they're not doing real good. 
and they always do better when you grow them from seed and I might have to come back in here and seed some of this because uh, def definitely they they look like they're struggling uh, they should they should have took off pretty easy but uh, we'll say they didn't but we do have uh, quite a bit of watermelon of course when we need to water a little more now this corn here is uh, doing pretty good it's about a foot to, to uh, maybe 15 inches tall and it's just now to where it's time to come in here and uh, fertilize it and lay it by and I'll have to do it by hand uh, it'd be nice if I had it uh, set the rows up ahead of time for the tractor but then I have to put them further apart because I don't have my I don't have it set up to where I can do like a two row system so anyway we'll get this done but but that's where way we're looking at right now I hope you enjoyed this tour I'm still going to get a tour of the uh, the propagations in the the fig orchard because the uh, they are coming back but they're uh, most of them are coming back from the bottom they shouldn't have froze a lot of them shouldn't have froze but but they did and uh, we'll we'll take a look and see how that's going but anyway hope you enjoyed it and uh, of course enjoy that gardening experience